made you stop doing what you're supposed to be doing? Could it be that it was because you saw no results taking place? How I many you know that we are a result-oriented world now? Yeah. Amen. We, we want to see results. We want it to take place. But could it be that we didn't see any results? Or in other words, we were distracted by what was not happening. You see, blessings and answers are often missed because of distractions. And all of us can really say this, you know, hey, you started out strong. Your mind was made up that, you know what, I'm going to wait on God until, until my change comes. But then we realize that time is moving on, that time is passing on, and it seems like nothing is happening. In fact, it, it, it gets so bad that we, we, it seems like things just get worse and worse, and then we begin to think, maybe, you know, maybe this is not God's will for me. Or, or maybe God is not with me. They, these thoughts begin to creep in. And once that, that first distraction begins to take root, it causes you to take your eyes off God. And when you take your eyes off God, they don't just wonder, but they take you to a place where your, your eyes are now on the situation which seems Oh, so wrong. You've been distracted. And the more, the more you look at that distraction, the more you look at that first distraction, the more it begins to grow. And then it eventually begins to grow so much that now it appears to be even bigger than God. Mind you, you haven't sinned. You've just been distracted. Don't be fooled. A distraction does not always have to be a problem or a situation that seems to be getting worse. Sometimes a distraction can come in the form of you in the dating world. It all seems right. Well, I know, I know he's not saved, but, but I know he really loves me. Or I, I know she's not saved, but I know she really loves me. Or I know this job may take me away from some church, but, but I know I'll be able to pay all my bills. Or, or maybe it's, it, it, it's just, uh, I know I, I shouldn't be hanging around these people, but I'm just tired of being lonely. I'm tired of being by myself. You find yourself, you go to, you go to church on Sunday morning and instead of being, being blessed and, and, and listen to the, the message, you, you begin to focus, you begin to lose your focus because maybe you hear a child holler or maybe you hear a baby cry or, or, or maybe you begin to get focused on those that are walking around that are disturbing things and you, you get distracted and, and, you know, and you miss out the part of the worship service that, that God intended to move in your life. Maybe you missed out on part of the sermon or the message that, that, that God intended for you to hear to change something in your life. Amen. You became distracted. Today we're so easily distracted by the least little thing. And the devil, he comes in and he uses those distractions to cause us to miss out on what we're needing and what we're looking at for God. And then we walk away wondering, why God? You keep, you know, sometimes we come to church and we start looking at this. And when's he going to shut up? When are they going to stop singing so he can preach, so we can get out of here? I got things to do. We're distracted by, by things that we need to do in our life. We've created so much busyness in our life that we don't really have the time we need to put aside for God. We come to church in a hurry to leave. 
Because we're distracted by things that we need to do. But it's those things you need to do worth you losing your soul or even your children's soul over. Because distractions in and of themselves, they are not sin. But if you allow them to creep in and rob you of the blessings and rob you of the things of God, they will begin to become sin in your life. So the devil doesn't need to destroy you if he can distract you. We've got things to do. Hurry up. And, and the moment you focus on those things, you miss out on what you need. Or you come to church and you, you got your head down and, 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 and don't, you're not fooling me. I know you're not praying because I can see the glow from the phone on your forehead. <laughs> or when you're staring at this, uh, I know you're not trying to figure out what time it is because you know how to tell time, but you're just reading a text on your watch so you don't have to pull your phone out. <laughs> Distractions. That phone is not sin. That watch is not sin. But if you allow it to become between you and God, that distraction has now become sin in your life. And what happens? You leave church. And you say to yourself, you know, it was a good service. And, and I did get something out of it. But I just cannot say exactly what it is that I got out of it. Why? Because you were distracted. Why? Because you were in his presence, but you were so distracted that he was not aware of his power. Have you ever considered just how big of a problem distractions are in our lives? We're distracted by the least little thing. We're distracted when we're driving. And not necessarily, in fact, I'm, I'm the world's worst. Sometimes I try to text and I know I need to put that phone down because I can't text and drive. <laughs> and I got to the point that I just wait or uh, if I got the earpiece in, I'll tell Siri what to text. And then uh, you got to be careful with that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but if it's not the phone, it's not the texting, it's, not, it, it's the radio or it's the, you know, it's the music that's playing or some things that's happening around you. you Get distracted so easily. Distractions have, have caused people to even lose their jobs. Yeah. Distractions have caused people to, 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 to relationships to be strained. And even so much, distractions has even caused some divorces. Yeah, right. See, when, when we are distracted, we're here. But really not here. Come on. You understand? We're here. I mean, we're here in body. But our mind is somewhere down the road. Right. Come on. Our, 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 we're here. And, and nowadays there's so many, so many of us that just stare at our smartphones. We check, we, we're checking emails doing church. I've even seen people balance a checkbook doing church. I've seen, you know, people, well, it's just, you either, you're checking your Facebook account. I see sometimes, sometimes people doing prayer meetings, they said, they're, they're looking at their Facebook. You check your Twitter account, you check your, your uh, 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 Instagram, the TikTok, and uh, what's that other one out there, the Snapchat, you know what I mean? People worry so much about that. Distracted by, by these things, and these things are not going to save you. Right. These things, these distractions are going to cause you to lose out with God. Amen. And, and I say that, and I have all those things, and I, I look at all those things. So I'm not saying those things in and of themselves are wrong, but they can become a distraction that can cause you to lose out. Not only your soul, but maybe it's something that you need from God at that particular time and that particular night. The devil doesn't need to destroy you if he can distract you. And whenever you allow these little distractions to come in and take you away from the blessings of God and from
from the presence of God. You know what the devil's doing? He's sitting over in the corner and said, oh, this is going to be an easy one. I don't have to do anything. They're creating their own distractions. And I've seen people in church, and I've seen people here, I'm going to be honest with you, that the Spirit of God is moving, and you don't want to get up, and you don't want to, you create your own distraction. Our bodies are present, but our minds are on the other side of town. Our minds are worried about what we're going to do when we get home. Or our minds are worried about what's going to happen tomorrow. What about tonight? What about in this place tonight, in the presence and the power of God? If you need something from God, you need to lay aside the distractions and be determined tonight that I'm going to get what I need. I know it's Wednesday night. I know i got to get up and go to work in the morning, but I'm not going to leave here. I'm not going to allow these distractions to keep getting what I need from God. We are absent because we are distracted. No sin. Paul even says the, 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 the weight in sin. Let us lay aside the weight in sin that does easily beset us. Those distractions are the weights that he talks about. Let Lay aside those things. So what if we're later than 8 o'clock getting out of here on Wednesday night? As long as I get what I need for God. Or you know what? Maybe I don't need anything tonight in particular. But I've got a brother or sister to sit here. I need to quit causing distractions so that they can get what they need from God. Hallelujah. One of the most, probably one of the worst and most serious of all distractions is our fears. If there is something that we are afraid of, more often than not, it takes up most of our thought process. Right. And that's just being human. It takes up our thought process. And we, when we are turned or when we, uh, not turned, when we are tuned into our fear or, or our fears, we can hardly concentrate on anything else. Have you noticed, I'm sure you have, that over the last several years, maybe going back 20 years, the world is much different than it used to be. We are facing, we are, we are faced more now than threats than we've ever had. Yes. It's all around us today. Yeah. And, 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 you know, I, my heart goes out to the families and those in Ukraine and yeah. You know, and, and the victims over there, and, uh, and and I'm not demeaning what's happening over there, but I'm t I want to talk about what's happening here. I mean, thank God, not recently, but this, you know, the bombings, the shootings, yes. and all the the violent action that has taken place in America. America has become a nation, or become a very different nation because of the constant threat that we are under and the fear by people who resent our belief in Jesus Christ. Right. Now, several years ago, we talked about it being ISIS. We talked about the foreign coming in, and, but now we, we don't have to look nowhere other than our own government. Amen. That's true. Amen. And that's all I'm going to say about that. But we, we look around and we, we see frightening things. We see them in our own backyards now, the, the violence, the rape, the child abuse, the abductions, yes. and weapons, and, and even weapons of mass destruction that are being misused. Yes. Fear has set in. Yes. Fear has caused major distractions in the people of God. And I know the Bible says that he didn't give us a spirit of fear, but we're human. That's right. We fear. And you've heard me say it over and over again. We're going to fear things. But we cannot sit back and allow fear to dominate our thoughts. To dominate our thinking. To dominate our life. Because there's a point there that, hey, I didn't have to distract.
destroy this person. All I had to do was get them distracted. We fear, or, or, or we, 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 many people face the fear of losing jobs, especially now with the economy like it is. And then there's people out there that don't even want to go to work. But you face the fear of this, you know, the, the threat of illness and the, the haunting fear of, of, of death and the, the uncertainty of life. It is more prevalent today than it ever has been. Distractions, distractions, distractions. I do not believe not one bit that the devil has created this stuff. You may believe different, but I don't believe it. But I believe he has used it to cause distraction in God's church, in the people of God. And all too often we allow these distractions to succeed in taking our eyes off Jesus. We get so wrapped up that we got to have this nice thing or that nice thing. And there's nothing wrong with having nice things. But we get so wrapped up and engrossed into those things that we think we've got to work this many hours. Or we got to work that many hours. And we got to take on this job and that extra job. But where is the time at for God? Where do we believe that God will supply all of our needs? Amen. Where do we think that He is our provider? Yes, He is. Hallelujah. These distractions are they're going to cause us to miss out on things that God has for us, and it will leave us asking, why didn't God help me? Well, God was helping you, but we became more distracted before it could become manifested in our lives. Yeah. We're an impatient people. Yeah. Let's look back at our text in the book of Matthew. We find the disciples are in a ship. And this ship was caught in a storm. And during the storm, they, they look out and they see Jesus walking on the water. They see, see him walking while well, they thought it was a spirit. They thought it was a ghost. But Jesus said, fear not as I. Be not afraid. And Peter yells out to the Lord, if it's you, let me walk on the water and come to you. And Peter gets the answer of come, come on out. And let's look at verse 30. It says, but when he, Peter, saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And he began to sink and he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And the 29th verse tells us that Peter walked on the water until what? Until he began to look at the boisterous winds and the waves. Now, what Peter began to focus on was not something that was supernatural. It was something that was very nature by its nature. The wind, the, the storms, the, the, the natural things that happen in our life. You see, we want to look for things that are supernatural. We want to look for things that are out of this world. Things that, you know, that, that, that distract us. But in reality, it's those common things that we see each and every day. That distract us. And Peter saw the wind and the waves. And, and when he did that. When he got distracted. He took his eyes off Jesus. And he became afraid. And, and, and because of that distraction. Peter began to sink. Peter became distracted. With what was going on around him. Oftentimes we get distracted by all the situations and all the circumstances and even all the things that are happening in the world today. And we take our eyes off of what really matters. We take our eyes off of Jesus. So Peter began to focus on those things that were around him and around him and instead of continuously focusing on Jesus. And it's only when you truly come, only when you truly come.
to trust God that you will be able to overcome distractions. We've got to trust God. We've got to trust God. Let me tell you something about this story. When Peter began to sink, when Peter became distracted of everything that was going on around him, the Bible says that he lost focus and he took his eyes, he took his focus off of Jesus. But can I tell you that even though Peter was going down, even though Peter couldn't see Jesus, Peter knew that he was right there within his reach. And that's why Peter said, Lord, save me. I'm not so naive to think that we will never be distracted. But I'm here to tell you, church, what the Lord spoke to me last week or week before last, that we're about to enter into a realm that we've never entered into. I'm not so naive to think that there won't be distractions. I'm not so naive to think that there won't be things come against us. But when we do get distracted, just know we may not be able to see Jesus in it, but know that he is right there in front of us. We just need to cry out, Lord, save me. He's right there. That's what's gracious about God. That's what's great about a merciful God. Even though Peter began to sink, when he cried out, he reached his hand immediately now, and he picked him up. So I'm here to tell somebody tonight, you may be distracted by things that are going on in your life. You may be distracted by this or that. I'm here to tell you tonight, just begin to cry out. problem is that many of us though sometimes or we well we we never take time to learn how to trust God unfortunately many people see him as a genie in the bottle and he's just supposed to grant us our every wish or our every desire but we have got to learn. We must learn how to develop faith in God and come to know Him as a God who is always there. The question should never be, how can I trust God? The question should never be, how can I trust God? But rather, a strong acclamation of its God. I trust. No matter what I see, no matter what I hear, no matter what I feel, it's God that I trust. Oh, what blessings. Oh, what blessings are in store for the person that comes to the place of fully trusting God. But we can't trust him because we are distracted by every little thing. We can't trust God because we begin to give devil more credit than he deserves. Look, the storms of life, they're going to come. There's no doubt. The storms of life are going to come. But let me ask you a question. Who is God to you? Who is God to you? Is he, is he that God that many people think that runs from problems or, or goes and hides himself because he doubts himself? Is he that God that people think that doesn't know how to help you or, or maybe the situation just took him by surprise or, or maybe he's got to go somewhere else and, and try to figure it all out? Of course not. 
Remind yourself that there is nothing, nothing impossible with God. And also remind yourself that there is no good thing that he will ever withhold from you. We can't afford as individuals you cannot afford to get distracted. As a church we cannot afford to get distracted. But if we do remember God is right in front of us. You see God is so patient. God is so merciful. God is so gracious that he gladly waits to put you, to put me back on the right path. Amen. And God, he wants to bless you. Yes. God wants to help you. Yes, he does. God wants to heal you. Yes. And God longs oh, to answer you. Yes. In closing tonight, would you stand? I believe that God has so much in store for this church. And I believe God has so much in store for every individual that's in here tonight. But we've allowed so many distractions to keep us from receiving what God has for us. Brother Stewart, God's blessed me. Brother Stewart, God's done this. Brother Stewart, God's done that. But can you imagine how much more he wants to do? If we eliminate the distractions that are in our lives. It's Wednesday night, but I want to open these altars tonight. Look, don't let distractions cause you to miss out on the things that God has just for you. Is there anybody that says, Brother Stewart, I've, I've got distractions in my life. And I, I've even created some distractions in my life. Come on, that's it. Let's be honest with ourselves. Oh, God's been good to me, Brother Stewart. But imagine how much better he can be if we can eliminate the distractions. Remember, the devil doesn't need to destroy you if he can distract you.